So since I had such an extraordinary success with the last story I told you about my encounter with uh, the experience that I had with my mother and her passing, and so many of you re reached out to me and responded over it, which I'm very pleased about that. Thank you very much for your responses and your observations and your comments. And thank you for all the wonderful stories you continue to share with me about your own experiences. I thought I would relate another one because this one is so extraordinary that I don't believe it myself, and which is why I kept it a secret for so many years now. So in addition to that, just sit back and relax and hear this one. So a few years after my father died, it was January the 23rd. January the 23rd is a significant date because that's my father's birthday. So on January 23rd, I can't remember the exact year, but it was very, very bitter cold outside. I was on my way to my mother's house because she was making dinner for me. And my mother, my mother's spaghetti is like the best on planet Earth. It really, seriously, guys, she was a full-blooded German, but her homemade spaghetti sauce could rival any Italian in El Equipa. I kid you not. I could bring my friends here to back that claim up. But anyways, so she made spaghetti, and I'm like, yeah, I can't wait to dig my mouth into that because I know how good her spaghetti was. But I said, Mom, listen, I said, I'm going to run up to the cemetery real quick, and I'm going to leave this wreath on Dad's grave because today's his birthday. She's like, yeah, okay, that's fine. She said, I ain't going up there with you. She said, it's too damn cold. I ain't leaving the house. I said, yeah, I know. I didn't expect you to. So I get up there, and it's very, very cold outside. Like I said, it's that bone-chilling cold. You know that kind of cold, guys, where it just gets into your bones and makes you creak? So I'm standing at my father's grave, and all of a sudden, I get this eerie feeling that somebody is standing behind me. And I turn around after I talk to my father and every grave I go to guys I talk to the, to the dead I always do some of you folks may find that weird but I don't it's just my way of expressing my grief it's a way of me relieving my grief and I always talk to graves every time I visit I tell them what's going on in my life or you know whatever it is that I feel that I need to tell them so anyways after I cease talking to my father like I said I have this overwhelming sensation that there's somebody behind me so I turn around and there's this lady staring at me about 10 feet behind me. She's rather young. She's probably 30, 35 years old. And she's on this cane. She's, she's leaning on a cane, very young, very young woman to be leaning on a cane. She had a ghostly look about her. Her face was very pale and her hair was very dark. And part of her dress was lifted up to where I could see her shoe. And her shoe had a brace over it. You know those kind of braces, guys, like, you know, old polio victims had so that they could walk before they were completely crippled? You know what? Those kinds of braces that go over your foot? You, you know what I'm talking about? She had that. And I said, hello, ma'am. How are you? And she gives me an eerie, cold stare. And she says, she didn't say what I expected her to say, like, I'm fine. How are you? Why are you, you know, I'm standing here because I want to tell you something. She just kind of was really creepy looking, and she said, in a very monotone, young man, is that your father's grave? I said, yes, ma'am, it is. I said, I'm coming up here to pay my respects. Today's his birthday, and I'm just up here to wish him well. And she says to me, I have a message for you. I want you to go home and tell your mother that your father's at peace and that an old friend says hello. And I said, well, sure, okay, I can do that. But I said, you know, may I get your name so I can tell my mother who you are? And she didn't answer that question. Instead, what she said was, she asked me another, another question. She said, do you have any photos of your father? Now, what a coincidence that is because I just prior to visiting my mother, I, went, I was at my brother's house. I got a few photographs from him that I was going to digitize on my computer because my printer had a scanner. I was going to scan the photographs of my father, and I was going to save some of those photos on my hard drive and print out the rest and give them to my mom. I said, yeah. I said, ma'am, just wait a few minutes here. I said, just let me go to my car because where my father's grave is, uh, like from where you see here in the cemetery, the road right is like right there, so it was only a couple of feet to get to my car to, so I could retrieve the photographs and show them to this woman that I've never met or seen in my life. So I go to my car, I walk around the passenger side, open up the passenger side door and the photographs are on the floor of the car. I retrieve those photos, I stand up, I slam the door, I walk around the front of the car and I go towards my father's grave. And when I do that, I all of a sudden look and see that this woman's no longer around, she's gone. I mean, she's just gone. 
by my father's grave where she was standing about 10 feet behind his grave, or I should say in front of his grave, uh, there's a series of, of footprints, okay? Sort of like right here, like if I'm right, if my dad's grave is like right here, and she's over here, there's all these circles of footprints where my hand is, where I'm wiggling, wiggling my fingers, and they all go in, a, in any kind of direction, and then all of a sudden, the, the, the last set of few footprints just goes out uh, maybe two feet, and then they stop. And there's no more footprints at all. There's nothing. It's like this woman just completely vanished. She wasn't in a car. She wasn't driving around the cemetery. The only car in the cemetery was mine. There was nobody there at the cemetery that day. It was bitter cold. I was the only one who was there, and I had a good purpose to be there because it was my father's birthday. Nobody else really had a good, <laughs> I suppose, a good reason to be in that cemetery, so nobody else was there except me and this woman. And I'm thinking, my God, that's really odd. A woman with a brace on her foot who can barely walk in this bitter cold weather, and all of a sudden she's gone. She's just out of sight. There's no way to comprehend what, what happened. How did she disappear so fast? So I got kind of freaky about it, and I was like, well, I'm just going to go home. I don't know who this woman is. She didn't tell me who she was. So I get, I, I go home. I go to my mother's house. I open up the door. She serves me dinner, and we chat, and she can tell there's something on my mind. And she's like, what happened? She's like, w what is your problem? You seem like you're troubled about something. And I proceed to tell my mother what happened. I said, at Dad's grave, I said, I met this woman. And she says that she knew you and Dad. And she had a message for me to tell you that Dad's at peace and that an old friend says hello. And my mother's like, well, who was she? I said, I don't know. She wouldn't tell me her name. I said, I never seen this woman in my life. I never seen pictures of her. I never, you know, when, when my father died, uh, she wasn't at the funeral. I had no idea who this woman was. And my mother's like, well, tell me more about her. Tell me, give me a description. I said, she was kind of tall. She had really beautiful coal black hair, kind of a pale face. And I said, she was young, probably 30, 35. And I said, she had this brace that went up over her foot and my mother just stopped all of a sudden as though the complexion left her face and she grabbed her mouth and she said, oh my God. And tears started to roll down her face. I'm like, mom, what's the problem? She's like, just excuse me for a moment. So she goes to her bedroom and she brings out this big, thick photograph book, man. I mean, this thing is like enormous. And she opens up the book and she sees all the, she showed me all these pictures and all these pictures of my father and her taken before I was born because my parents did not have children right away. My mother had fertility problems for a number of years and she couldn't get pregnant. So there was a lot of parties and celebrations and all those kinds of things well before, you know, my brother and I, you know, were conceived. And I saw pictures of my dad with black hair. I never seen my father with black hair. That's how old these photos were. I never remember my father with black hair. He always had gray hair. So I'm looking and looking and I'm going through these photographs and then I finally see the lady. I'm like, that's her, there she is. That's her, that's her. And she's got this cane in the photograph. The very cane that I saw. And my mother just, looks at me and she starts almost like wailing again and she's like Mark that woman's name that you saw in the cemetery is Geraldine she was a good friend of your father's and me she had multiple sclerosis she died of multiple sclerosis before you were born she came to say goodbye to your dad and say hello to me I've never been able to process that story the way I think I should, but I just thought I would relate it to you guys. I've been to the cemetery since then a zillion times to see both of my parents, who, because now my mother takes my father's side in the grave plot, and I've never seen that woman again.